Usually when Photoshop adds a new feature, Adobe makes a big deal about it. This one flew under the radar, and yet I would argue it's the best new feature in years, one that will make a huge difference to every single one of us. Quite simply, select subject and remove background have gone from, eh, you know, too great, but only if you change one very important setting. All right, so here they are, select subject and remove background as they appear in the contextual taskbar. As you may know, they both employ AI in order to identify and isolate the subject of a photograph. They are, without a doubt, the best in automated selection technology available to any piece of software, Adobe or otherwise, at the present time. What you may not know is that they're both the same feature, they just return different results. So when you click Select Subject, Photoshop returns, or gives you, if you prefer, a marching ant style selection outline, which you can then convert to a layer mask by clicking this icon right here. Or, I'll go ahead and undo, you can click Remove Background, which is gonna do exactly the same thing on a pixel by pixel basis. It's just that it returns a layer mask instead. And either way, it's exactly what I want because after all, I wanna take this authentic turtle. I say authentic because I captured it in the actual ocean at 70 feet deep using an iPhone. I've developed the image, but I have not edited it at all. What I wanna do is select everything that's turtle. That is the head, the carapace, the flippers, and get rid of everything that's not turtle, including the sandy bottom and the flotsam and the coral in the background. And I can do exactly that at the click of a single button, which is amazing. And if you agree, won't you take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications? After all, this is just the beginning. I mean, so far things are hardly perfect. If I were to zoom in right here, you can see that we have a choppy edge on the bottom of the shadow which I shouldn't even be seeing because the shadow is part of the background. After all, I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see that the forward edge of the flipper is in great shape. But after this claw, that's a real detail, by the way, things get very iffy indeed. We have lots of choppy edges, a lot of background that's seeping in. We also have some choppy edges around the right hand edge of the carapace and over here along along the creature's shoulder, if you will, because it's just kind of, you know, kneeling down. We're just uh, hanging out together after all. Now the problem, I'll go ahead and revert the image. The problem is not with select subject or remove background per se, but rather with the AI technology that they are employing. And you can change that by going up to the edit menu here on the PC. On the Mac, you'd go to the Photoshop menu, choose preferences, and then choose image processing. And you wanna change this setting right here from device, quick results to cloud detailed results at which point some of you may say hey, hey hold the phone there buddy this is not a new feature this particular pop-up menu in fact has been with us for the last three years which is absolutely true good call and even more to the point that this setting right here device has not changed in the last three years it's the same old bad thing it ever was. What has changed very recently and very much for the better is cloud, as we'll see in just a moment. But if I were saying a little bit of a sidebar here, I feel remiss if, if I didn't mention this. If I'm saying you want to switch from quicker to detailed, then surely you want to switch these guys from faster to more stable. That is in fact not the case. Faster means that the processing for all these options here happens on the GPU which is just plain better. Whereas more stable switches it to the CPU, which is clunkier and it's gonna take longer as well. The only reason to change any of these settings is because your NVIDIA card, for example, is acting up, in which case you're much better off quitting Photoshop, updating the driver, restarting your computer, and then trying again. But do not change these settings, leave them alone. They have really nothing to do with the current topic, which is about 
select subject and remove background, which are serviced by device, which means that everything's gonna happen inside of your version of Photoshop on your system. Problem is this AI is very limited and has not been updated very recently. It doesn't get much attention over time. Whereas cloud is a much bigger model that resides on remote servers that are getting updated all the time but as I say, have recently been updated very significantly. Now, this does mean that you need a live internet connection and it may make some of you a little nervous, if not downright queasy. After all, who wants to share their images with the Adobe? I dare say very few of us, I don't for example, and I don't blame you if you don't either. However, that's not what's happening. What's happening is it's a one-way street. It's coming from the remote servers, in other words. And this big technology, this big AI model that's being updated on the fly, in no way, shape, or form is your image being uploaded, tinkered with on the fly, and then downloaded to your machine. That's just not happening, as you're about to see. You just don't have the time. You can check that out for yourself. In any event, go ahead and switch it to cloud. That's the better way to go. It's not gonna take longer either. This nonsense about quicker is just a function of how fast your particular connection is. Doesn't have anything to do with the complexity or the resolution of the image. Click OK. And now I'll click that exact same button, remove background once again, could be select subject either way. And I am going to get a much better result. Notice this shoulder over here is nice and smooth. We don't have any shadow at all. We just got a smooth underbelly of the creature. We have a smooth, what is this? A flipper before and after the claw all the way around and over here throughout the carapace as well. I dare say, in fact, that this is as smooth as any selection I could draw using the pen tool. Could I be a little more precise with the pen? Sure, I could dig into these edges over here on the right side of the flipper a little more, but otherwise it is an absolutely wonderful selection outline and it has gotten so much better just recently. Let me show you. This is the original turtle, you can tell that. This is what happens if you use remove background or select subject set to device with the AI setting to device in Photoshop 2024. So just a year ago, the most recent version of that software is 25.12 for what it's worth. And notice that we've got the rough shoulder, we've got the rough shadow, we've got the rough edges over here in the flipper and the carapace. And by the way, watch this, I'll update to Photoshop 2025. Hey, real quick, in case you didn't know, select subject and remove background aren't Photoshop's only AI enabled selection functions. There's also the object selection tool, which these days can identify individual people, including such distinguishing features as hair, clothing, and facial details. To learn all about it, join my Patreon which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to automated selections assisted by the ever expanding power of cloud-based AI in Photoshop, which is version 26.8. Did you see anything happen? This is 2024, this is 2025, a year later, nothing is different. Pixel for pixel, the results are identical. That's because device, the device AI has not changed. Whereas if I were to switch to cloud, Photoshop 2024, once again, 25.12 for what it's worth, things are better, question mark, because I'm not really sure they're that much better. We definitely have a less rough shoulder going on, but it's also more vague. We have a lot of translucency built into it. We've got a lot of weird stuff that's kind of bouncing in and out of visibility here underneath this flipper. We have this shadow. This shadow is part of the creature. Notice that it's a shadow that the turtle is casting on its own flipper. It should be in here, not like this bad shadow right there. This is good shadow. We want to keep that and yet it's being dropped down in 2024. We have some very bad flipper action before and after the claw. So it's even worse than device where this image is concerned. Obviously your results are going to vary on an image by image basis. However, this is, you know, not great. This stuff is bad. This is bad as well. Whereas a year later, 
right now in fact things are much much better and they have gotten much much better in the last couple of months as i record this and what's amazing about this is if you go up to the help menu and choose what's new you're going to see a bunch of new stuff that has occurred this year between basically january and june of the year 2025 like eight different features that apply to different user groups Whereas they don't say anything. Adobe doesn't say anything about this miraculous upgrade to the software, which helps every single one of us. And so rather than leaving you with this obvious demo file, I'll wrap things up with a full-fledged composition made possible by this new technology enhancement. Now, some of you may feel like, well, hey, that's all very well and good for your smooth reptile, buddy. But what about those wispy details that we encounter on a regular basis on dry land? Things like hair and fur and leaves and all that other natural bric-a-brac. Well, here we are looking at a photograph from the Dreams Time Image Library. Link in the description. And here's what happens if I were to leave the AI set to device, whether I'm using Photoshop 2024 or 2025 or 2023 for that matter. Things look not so much like I cut them out with a dull set of scissors, but rather that I did so while I was absolutely insane. Compare that to the much better result that actually includes the wolf's face and so forth. Were I to switch the AI to cloud in Photoshop 2024? So I want to bring things into focus here a little bit. I want, I'll zoom in to the hair so that you can see that it's not necessarily perfect and you would want to follow this up with the select and mask workspace, for example. However, we do have better definition along the bottom edge and so forth. We do have a little bit of drift on the inside of her leg right here this negative space and we're including too much of this blade of grass and we've got kind of drifty details drifty edges along the entire outer ridge compare that to cloud just a year later in photoshop 2025 so as things stand right now in version 26.8 we've got excellent definition still we'll have to revisit that hair but of course but we have excellent definition especially and just want you to check this out this wolf is it a wolf or is it a wolf impersonator but it's got a very nicely defined paw things get even better when you're working with highly reticulated details like you may recognize this, the Eiffel Tower. And so here's what happens. If I were to remove the background using device with the AI set to device. So we've got all kinds of sky caught inside the scaffolding here as well as down below. We lose the down below stuff when you switch to cloud in Photoshop 2024. So once again, a year ago, just a scant year, but we still have all kinds of sky trapped inside of the beams or whatever they are. I'm not an architect, although we are losing a lot of detail as well, as you can see right here. Whereas if I were to switch to Photoshop 2025, we bring that detail back. Isn't that amazing? And most of this enhancement has happened, as I say, in the last couple of months, I'm working in 26.8 is the version number. It's not perfect. We still have some blue edges, but that's the kind of stuff that we could enhance using our manual skills. Now, I wanna end on one last note. For those of you who are familiar with the object selection tool and its offerings and failures. I'm going to switch over to this version of the image and I want you to know, you may know this already, that Object Finder is turned on by default. And that means that in addition to dragging around with this tool, you can just move it into the Eiffel Tower, for example, and click. Also notice, and so I could just click in order to define a selection outline like so. So it is gonna return a marching ant style selection. Notice that it's highly reticulated by the way. And I could then click on this mask icon right here 
in order to convert it to a layer mask. And the only reason we're seeing the red highlight is because I have that tool selected. If I switch back to the rectangular marquee, you can see that things are working out quite nicely. Now, I'm gonna undo that for a second because I just want you to see if I switch back to the object selection tool that it has next to select subject, the select subject button, it's got this pop-up menu which allows you to switch on the fly between device and iCloud, uh, cloud that is. It is not remembered from one session to the next. So if you were to switch it to device and click, then it would switch back to cloud because that's the preference setting in the moment. And it would only apply to select subject. It would not apply to select subject or remove background out here in the contextual taskbar. So it only wor works in the options bar. I know that this is tiny little detail and it's designed for those of you who care about this kind of stuff, including the fact that this pop-up menu used to not work until just a few months ago, it didn't work. There was a bug where they introduced a feature, but it was a dead feature on arrival. Isn't that fun? Now it does work. And by the way, I want you to see here, it, we have this hard edge checkbox. The thing to note, it does work where select subject is concerned. It does not affect the behavior of the object selection tool or by the way nor does it affect the behavior of object finder so i'm in the weeds but i i'm in the weeds for those of you who like weeds so anyway here we go here's the difference this is what you get with the object finder you get that it's, it's actually cleaner in a lot of ways we don't have nearly as much bleed from the blue sky background but we are losing a lot of the scaffolding and detail as well so that's the trade-off it has not changed by the way recently this is just for the sake of comparison i do want you to note however i am going to zoom in let's say over here that this is the kind of stuff you see when, let me switch back there, that hard edge checkbox is turned on as by default. If you were to turn it off, you will get softer transitions like these right here. So what do you think? Am I the only one who can get lost in the weeds while looking at the Eiffel Tower? Or are there more of me like you out there? Comment below, subscribe, turn on notifications, and accept my heartfelt thanks for watching this video. I'm Deke McClelland. This is Deke Now.